because Ironclad does not do poison. Believe it or not. Interesting map layout. I'm immediately drawn to this grouping. Always like elites that are after the mid-act chest here. I always consider these to be slightly easier because of that additional relic you'll have. And then there's quite a few elites before that. Um, this one looking a little sketchy. This one's the easiest one here. So if I wanted to do three elites, this would be the way. I like the shop after beating two elites and getting a chest. But this would only work out if I get a starting bonus that actually helps me immediately. Which card remove does. What about one hit point enemies? Oh, interesting. Hmm. I could actually see this being a relatively good Niao's Lament. Um, but I would also be perfectly happy to just remove a card here. Our act boss, this act is Slime Boss, which makes me want to remove a Defend card, keep all the strikes. I think I might rather take Niao's Lament, though. I don't mind Niao's Lament going into a bunch of early question mark rooms with Ironclad. You're essentially starting with 11 additional hit points as clad with Niao's Lament because you have three fights where you heal for six with no risk of taking damage, not really. And it's very common for Act 1 events to require hit points from you. Weird that I'm turning down the pocket watch right now. It's true. There's there is the uh, rare relic curse dart, which I haven't actually talked about. Um, mostly because of this shop positioning here, which would make me not want to go to an early shop. I wouldn't totally dislike taking a curse for a rare relic and maybe going into this store. That way we do have a rare relic. But it is possible for this to low roll. A bad curse plus a useless rare relic could could put us down a lot of health in the early fights and can really risk our ability to fight multiple elites this act. That said, a good rare relic can be an instant game winner, basically. Immediate dead branch, immediate pocket watch, immediate helix. These are all pretty good things. What's the worst rare relic? Well, uh, especially combined with a curse, I'd say it's very likely to be the unceasing top. For example, if you get unceasing top and normality, um, the top is really not going to be able to do anything. Uh, unceasing top on Ironclad is already quite a stretch. Um, other ones that really don't have enough of an immediate impact to justify the curse can be the turnip, the ginger, um... What are all the rare relics? There's definitely a few other ones that I'm not thinking of immediately here. Let me just quick check. Slay the Spire relics. Let's take a look at all of them. Shovel. Anything that requires a rest side action. So yeah, Shovel, Peace Pipe, and Gurya can be really, really bad up front. Calipers might not do anything for a long, long time. Ice Cream might not do anything for a long, long time, but has more use than the Calipers does up front. Wing Boots might not potentially offer much of use, although they make it at least very difficult to get killed. Most of the others are pretty good. So which rare relics do help? Asks Cheesy Wiz. Excellent question. The, the really good ones, the ones that I'd say are immediately very strong, are the Captain's Wheel, the Dead Branch, the Duvu Doll, the Fossilized Helix, the Gambling Chip, the Incense Burner, the Old Coin, the Pocket Watch, the Thread Needle, Tori's okay, Tungsten Rod's okay. But those are the really big ones. And then on Ironclad, we also have Charon's Ashes and Magic Flower, which are also quite good. And uh, Chant Belt, which is okay. But yeah, I'd say you're much more likely to get something that's good than bad. And the, again, the ones that are good are really good. Which is why I do often value Rare Relic Starts, especially on this character. I don't think it's the right pick here, though. Although it could be. I mean, it really does depend on the specific relic, of course. If it's if it's Dead Branch, then yeah, you should click this button. But you don't know if it's Dead Branch. How did I remember all those? No, I had the wiki open, just to be clear. I, I opened up a, a browser tab, and I looked at the wiki, is how I listed all those. I did not remember them all. 
Sailor's Scout's Honor, rather. Sailor's Honor? What is that? Scout's Honor. Not that I was a scout, but, you know, it's as honorable as one. I want to try to get the one hit point elite, I think is what I decided. That's enough events for me to feel like it's kind of worth it. Sailor's Mouth, that's right. What's the best boat thingy? I, I prefer the horn cleat, personally, the turn two boat thingy. Because the number of fights that attack you on turn two is very substantial. Oh my. I am happy with an early blood for blood, let me tell you. Especially in the slime boss fight. Hemokinesis is not too bad. I'd much prefer to have this after picking up the blood for blood. Ever snipe two elites? Yes. I have done two elite snipes before, and I hope to do so again in the future. Hmm, we are going to a shop later, so gaining gold right now is kind of tempting. I'm Now that we have a blood for blood, I'm already down to remove strike, and we have extra hit points, so I should probably take the option that loses hit points. Let's lose that strike. Merchant? Ooh. Hmm. What a store. Fredo Kuna, thanks so much for the prime sub and the four months. Is the first rare relic that we're presented with the option that Nia would have given us? Um, yes, but not the first one we see in a shop, just to be clear. Shops pull differently than other relics do. So the first rare relic we see outside of the shop is what our start would have been. Bloodletting makes that blood for blood real good. I'm also eyeing Evolve going into Slime Boss later this act. Iron Wave for 30 gold is okay. That's right, shops draw from the end of the relic list. Even for shop relics, even though that's the only way to get a shop relic, is to get it in the shop. So it's kind of funny, the the, the shop relics go into an, an ordered list, but only but then it gets used backwards, basically. I have no idea which pick between these two. Evolve into slime bosses are really helpful. Especially with the blood for blood. Like, evolve blood for blood means we can just redraw the blood for blood over and over again. And that is a, a genuinely pretty scary fight. Also helps us against the sentries later this act if we encounter them, and we're relatively likely to. I'm gonna take the evolve first. Who knows if that was the right pick. All right, we're hoping we get one more event that's not a combat. Got a power potion. Infernal Blade, Shrugger, and Trench. I say Shrug, personally, although no, Infernal Blade's not too bad. Struggle Muffin would buy Bloodletting and get ready for some two-cost attacks. Shrug would immediately go a bit better with Bloodletting. I think that's certainly true. I think that's certainly true. Alright, are you a combat? The answer is yes! We do not get an Elite for one hit point, unfortunately. However, I think we're in still pretty good shape to fight the Elites anyway. Because we have a Power Potion, we have an Evolve for Sentries, and we have a Fear Pot for the others. We also get to upgrade the Blood for Blood before going into the fight. And we can choose Anger, Iron Wave, or Wild Strike. One could make an argument for Wild Strike here because we have Evolve. I think I'd rather take it Anger, personally. I think I'd much rather take an Anger. Take an anger. I like that we can play the anger alongside the blood for blood. Upgraded blood for blood gets four more damage and more importantly discounts down to three base so you can play it even before you take damage. 
And our first elite is going to be Mr. Nob. Hello, Sir Nob. I think we absolutely use the Fear Potion here. Just play Fear Potion, Strike, Anger Evolve. It's likely that this will take us four turns to, to win this fight. Unless we can do something like redraw the Blood for Blood. Using the Fear Potion means we're not worried it, it, even if we do draw Bash and Blood for Blood together. We always draw at least one attack next turn. I think we're okay here. Uh, I would like to preserve the Power Potion, which I think will be more useful in one of these two fights. Headbutt Waiting Room, indeed. Indeed. Rorg, he say it. Okay, three strikes is fine. We get hit. That means Blood for Blood is two cost next turn. And the Vulnerable is still up. This will deal 33 damage. So if I draw another strike, we actually just kill. Oh-ho! Easy peasy. Look at that. Gremlin Knob dispatched. We're only minus two health, just defeating the Gremlin Knob. We did lose a potion, but whatever. We get Centennial Puzzle, Bloodletting come back. And probably an Impervious. Twin Strike's okay, but it's an Impervious. Balding Bigfoot, thanks for the Prime sub and the 13 months. Beat 820 Ironclad on your first attempt at that Ascension last night. Boss Swap Velvet Choker plus Curse Key plus Sneko. Now that's a way to do it. Five energy Sneko Eye. Does Evolve not trigger on Ascender's Bane? No, only status cards. With Ascender's Bane being a curse card, the Fire Breathing card works on both statuses and curses, but not Evolve. Definitely take Impervious here. All right, and this is... Oh, God. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> Although... Ooh, actually, we should probably buy Hemo. That said, clicking on Dark Embrace is very tempting. Little Wolf, he says, recently I commented about how Silent more than others needs four energy. You tried some boss swaps and have realized... Yes, Silent is very energy hungry. Especially with all her draw effects. More energy, more better. Yeah, Hemo works with Puzzle. Hemo works with Blood for Blood. We're kind of hurting for damage currently. Um, and this is literally hurting for damage. So I'll take it. I'll take it. Although I, I feel bad about this shop now. And again, we can't avoid the, th the third shop, which is overall going to lead us to a relatively weak act, having three shops when we could have had only one and some better events or something. Oh, well. That's how it be sometimes. We get a red skull. That's pretty cool. If we're below half health, we have more strength. I definitely feel like we're going to get through Act 1, at least, even if we don't come out all that strong. We're in a really good position here overall. Do I want to take damage this turn? I don't think so. Do I want a Power Potion here? Maybe I can use that in the heart, uh, the Slime Boss fight instead. I don't mind taking some damage up front because we have Red Skull. Um... I'm gonna go defend, defend, strike. No power potion, I guess. Hemokinesis impervious? Seems kind of cool. Although Hemokinesis might draw the blood for blood. I also want to make the blood for blood cheaper. Did draw the blood for blood. Did I just kill you? Or do I just block? Can I just block? Strike, strike, evolve next turn. Seems okay. We'll take 10. Which is what we're going to take last turn anyway. Actually, I won't take 10. I'll take none. Nice. Okay, here we go. Anger you. Blood for blood you. Full block. Now we're talking. Good work, Evolve.
It's the minimum amount of healing you should expect from a feed to take it. You mean in one fight, or just how many feeds do you need to land before it becomes worth it as a rare card pick? Ooh, blue candle. Oh my. Oh, that's good, actually. Ooh, I like that. Oh my. Even better. I'd say uh, as, as far as taking it as a card, as long as you can feed five times, it's probably worth it. 15 max health, 20 if upgraded, is, uh, is, a, is worth taking a curse for, essentially. How hosed would we be without that evolve? We would have had a bloodletting, so we would have been able to kill one of them very quickly. I don't think we would have been that bad, but certainly we did better in this fight with the evolve, definitely. Battle Trance versus Shockwave, very hard to pick here. Shockwave's a bit expensive, but applying weak and vuln to everybody is very good. Battle Trance draws more, helping with the anger, helping with the blood for blood. <laughs> wow, a cleave. I think I'll take the Battle Trance over the Shockwave. Shockwave's a little hard to afford right now. Battle Trance is always free. Ah. Can't afford the card remove, but we can do a Cheap Shrug or a True Grit. No Evolve for us, no Reckless Charge for us. People see a strawberry in a chest and click it, but see Periapt and key it. Why? Because Periapt is on average a lot less than six health. You have to get a curse after taking it, which does not happen all that often. Virtual256, thanks for the prime sub and the 27 months of support. Now, I have had some good Periaps. I think my best one was like 30 max health or something. How's it going, Shab? The voice is, uh, you know, come for the... Ah. Slay the Spire, stay for the cozy vibes and the voice, I guess. It's definitely one of the mainstays of the stream. I've recently started thinking about keying the Strawberry, too, so 7 max health is kind of medium tier as far as relics go. Sure, one more shrug for the road. Why not? Free shrugs. Or close enough to free. Evolve Bash? Yes. Draw me some cards. Hmm. All right. I'll take it. Perfect. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play Ascender's Bane and take one damage, entirely for the purpose of making Blood for Blood cheaper. And then we can play Hemokinesis to make the Blood for Blood completely free. Which I will be doing. We essentially get to do 37 damage for one energy there. It's a powerful combo. Yeah. Absolutely slaughter the leg of Berlin. We get a regal pillow, meaning if we choose to rest, we'll heal for more. We're offered another hemokinesis, which I won't be taking, uh, because there's a headbutt here, which I will be taking, allowing us to put a card from the discard pile back on top of the draw pile. Whether we're, we're recurring blood for blood or battle trance, a headbutt is an excellent card for enabling us to replay our most powerful attack options. Puffnut with four months in the Prime Sub. Appreciate you keeping it cozy. And Rubem PD with 39 months. The Triple Baker's Dozen. And the good luck wishes. What's better, question card or prayer wheel? Prayer wheel, usually. Prayer wheel gives you more total card rewards, but uh, I will say that question card is very notable for increasing the number of different rare cards you see after a boss, which is a very valuable thing. How's it going, Faley? Our first run is off to a pretty good start. We chose Niao's Lament on purpose to try to snipe an elite, failed to do so, and then Raffle stomped three elites anyway, such that we're at basically full health going into the boss with uh, quite a collection of clad cards here. We've got some self-harm plus the blood for blood happening. 
gonna go for two upgrades here, one of which will be the Battle Trance. Let's draw one more card, especially when I headbutt it. And the other one will be, I'm not sure, actually. I can play a Cinder's Bane right now, or I can just take one. I'm gonna take one. I don't wanna draw immediately, I wanna draw for this turn. Good. Okay, so we can play Impervious and then Headbutt that Battle Trance Plus, meaning we'd get to look at eight cards on this turn as well. It's really, really strong to be able to recur those cards. And then we can Headbutt the Battle Trance a third time. Or I can just play Hemokinesis here. It's only blocking for nine, so I just have to deal 20. Blood for blood will get there, so I'm not going to need the two health loss from this. But you can see, thanks to Headbutt here, we just played Battle Trance Plus three turns in a row. Very good card draw. All right, these are all mediocre cards. Earlier in Act 1, these are better takes, but right now we don't need any of them at the moment. Yeah, Headbutt Battle Trance this many times should be illegal. Had the fight gone on one more turn, it was possible that we redrew the Battle Trance again, and then we're able to Headbutt it again. Dual-wielding Blood for Blood can be a thing, definitely. That's true. Currently, we're able to redraw the Blood for Blood using the Headbot and the Evolve pretty consistently, so we can play it a lot. Dual-wheel would let us do it more. I think I'd prefer an upgraded version, but I can see the, I can see the reason to take here, or a reason to take. I feel like we have enough cards currently, and we're currently beating the Act boss. These are reasons for me to skip a card, usually. So I think I'd rather skip than take a, another unupgraded card, although it does do some stuff. Doesn't feel like it's enough stuff. My question is, what's our upgrade here? With the current lack of Vulnerable, we could argue for Bash upgrade, especially going into Act 2, that'll be quite useful. Could upgrade Anger for two additional damage on each Anger. That's not too bad. Blood for Blood's already upgraded, so we get to choose something else here. Blood for Blood and Battle Trance say plus already. Hemokinesis would add five damage, although we don't always want to play the Hemokinesis. Could upgrade a Shrug for more block. I actually don't hate that at all. Hmm. What about a Shrug? Could also upgrade Evolve to get more draw on the status cards, although I don't feel like we need additional draw from status cards yet. 039 thinks it is Bash. I think Bash is pretty reasonable here. I, I don't feel like any of these are dramatically better than the others. For Act 2, I really do like the upgraded Shrug. Let's try upgrading a Shrug, see how this works out for us. Like I said, I'm not afraid of Slime Boss. We even saved this Power Potion, which I think I'll use here. Um, this fight definitely can go sideways sometimes, and there's not a lot of fights in early Act 2 where a Power Potion does too much good. Maybe Chosen, perhaps, but do we need help against Chosen with this deck? No, we don't. What do you know? Turn 1 Bash, it's true. Uh, we also have either a Corruption or a Feel No Pain. Ooh, I kind of like the Corruption, I'm not going to lie. Feel no pain can let us block with slimes here. Actually, wait, isn't it Berserk? This is just free Berserk because we don't get attacked for the first two turns. Yeah, give me Berserk. Unironically perfect Berserk. Excellent. Uh, I'm not going to draw this. I'll be taking that back. We do quite a bit of damage on turn two with that vulnerable. Sure would be nice to have another vulnerable turn here, though. That's for sure. 
We go Hemo. Blood for Blood. Shrug, Battle Trance. Hemo, Strike. 31 health split from Slime Boss. We have Berserk and Evolve in play here. So we get to just dumpster these slimes. I don't even think we needed the Berserk, really, but it helped. Definitely helped. Why Blue Candle the Ascender's Bane? Just to make Blood for Blood cheaper. That's why I was excited about the Blue Candle initially, actually. Is it's a way to activate the Centennial Puzzle and a way to discount Blood for Blood. For the price of only one hit point. It's pretty good. Now, if we get Runic Cube, I'll be really excited. We're offered Corruption and Feed. This looks like a very nice situation for Feed. Deck has good draw control, meaning that we can consistently land the Feed for max health. Did you know that I play games other than Slay the Spire? It's true. Catch me over on Baylor Lord Plays for card games, RPGs, strategy games, and more. I'm giving five lucky fans that subscribe to the channel their choice Steam game. Enter the giveaway now by clicking the link in the description. Entry ends on January 9th. Corruption is definitely a late game powerhouse as well. Especially with two shrugs and impervious already. It's a very good corruption. But I say we probably take feed here. Feed making the range of Red Skull bigger is uh, also pretty cool. And a dad joke for the crowd, courtesy of XJ Phil. What does the Ironclad season his victims with? Destroys us. That's what I got for you. What's up, Wumbo? Thanks for the 10 generous gifted subs. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club, everybody. Oh, we got Astro Sneko Calling Bell. How interesting. How interesting. Bing Bong Blue Candle, not actually a meme here. I think this is a genuinely not a bad pick of these three options. The Calling Bell gives us a unique, unremovable, un unremovable curse, the Curse of the Bell, which does allow us to synergize with some of the relics we have already. We can draw more earlier in fights by eliminating it with the Centennial Puzzle. We're unable to redraw it again because of the Blue Candle, and it makes the Blood for Blood cheaper. We also get, of course, you know, three relics. One common, one uncommon, and one rare. The rare relic that we would have started our run with. Sneko Eye is great. We draw lots of cards every turn, but they're random cost. That's not so good in a deck that's trying to use zero cost cards repeatedly. Battle Trance, Blood for Blood, Anger. I don't love that. Transform and upgrade three cards could be amazing. We can get rid of three strikes here, but unless we get cards that are really good, um, the newly added stuff could just be dead weight in the deck. So it might be better to pick up relics that are going to add value to the deck without requiring more cards. You crazy for thinking Sneko is the worst here? I don't think so. I think that this is a a pretty weak Sneko Eye into a... Although, had we taken Corruption, this would be a different story, right? With Corruption, I can take the Sneko Eye more easily. But I like the Culling Bell here. Let's Let's try it out. We get lots of relics immediately, and an, an, and an additional curse that could work out. Let's see what those relics are. Not bad. Potion Belt gives us two more slots for potions. Molten Egg means we can add more attacks to the deck as they'll be upgraded. And the Mango gives us 14 additional max health right away. That's not too shabby overall. So it was a Mango all along. I'm not unhappy that we didn't start with a Mango. I think that would have been kind of weak. Something like this. There's a bunch of events early on. Getting bites would be sweet. This deck would love bites. Oh, this deck would love bites. Maybe I'll take three events. Although, combats are good because of guaranteed feeds. Well, maybe not guaranteed, but likely to feed. 
Um, we could go for the Burning Elite, or we can go to this shop. I think with 162 gold, we probably don't want to go to too early a shop, like last time. Zimbot, thanks for the five months. Almost, yeah, half a metric year already, it's true. Do I make ma do I like mango less when I already have feed? No, I think more max health is is very valuable. Especially as you get up to around 150, you become very, very secure. Do I think it would significantly change the game if you got the relic first, then the rare? I think it would make certain relics a lot better. Namely, Snekoi would be way better because you could pick Snekoi and then with three different rare card choices, you're almost always offered a three cost card. Slabsman, thanks for the 10 months of support. So I think it would lean players towards picking certain relics more often. Is there any other path I want here? Pyramid first would also be very helpful. There's also a more combat route here if I want less events, but I think I want a few events here. I'm feeling events at the moment. Okay, let's see what happens. I'm feeling good. Nemo can Nemo. The fall of is not worth playing in this fight because there are no statuses here. So go with Cinder's Bane to make the Blood for Blood one cost. Uh, and then we can land a feed next turn guaranteed as long as we can do math successfully. So feed does 10, blood for blood again would do 32 total. That's still way too much. Hmm. Let's see, 46 currently. We have next turn we're looking at 38. Which is more than 37. So we can kill now with blood for blood on top. We can block one time. Play blood for blood, strike, feed. Get back nine health. That's not too bad at all. Oh my. Oh my. Wow. On one hand, feel no pain is exceptional here, allowing us to block whenever we exhaust a card. On the other hand, blood for blood number two in a deck that's able to repeatedly damage itself and make this a free card. I think a second Blood for Blood does massive work. I'm gonna take this Blood for Blood. I think that's too much useful damage to ignore. Also, yikes. The birds are here. And they angie though. Um, but my question is, what if I chose not to block this attack on purpose? What if I play Evolve Strike Strike here on purpose? And then we'll draw eight cards and both Blood for Bloods are zero cost. I could block one time with Defend. We'll take one, still draw eight, but then the Blood for Bloods are two cost. I think we'd want them to go all the way down to zero. Duke of Lameness with six months of support. But what if I chose not to block by accident? Blood ate blood. Where's Runic Cube when you want it, though? Oh, this is excellent. So we can headbutt blood for blood and draw it again. So as far as I see it, we feed on one of them and block for eight here. This does 11. Actually, maybe I headbutt Shrug? Curse won't draw, so I, and what I mean by that is blood for blood, headbutt blood for blood, shrug it off to draw the blood for blood. Just to be clear, we're drawing it with shrug. Um, but is there a way to maybe hit both of them here? We got one, 
two, three. We can definitely knock one out of the air. This does five, this does four. So if I anger headbutt feed, it already dies, right? Yes, but then I only have one energy, right? So yes, I should headbutt blood for blood. I think hit this one. I don't think it matters that much. I wonder if that was a speed potion turn. Do lose a little bit more health here than I would have liked, but overall we're we're okay. We don't draw the blood for blood. We take a lot of damage next turn unless I play Hemo now. I'll pay two. Okay, not too bad. Headbutt is four damage. Can't knock the bird out of the air because we only have three energy with which to play attacks. Power through with Evolve, very good. Sword Boomerang with a plus, not that good. Let's take a power through. Overall, we're doing quite well with our hit point total. We've got three good potions. If we go into the elite fight with nothing else, how do I feel? Just fine, quite frankly. We should be just fine. So let's take some events here. First event is the Forgotten Altar. I was wondering. Gain 5 max health by losing 33, or just add another curse. With Regal Pillow, I actually don't mind effectively sacking an upgrade to get 5 more max health. So let's take more max health. We can rest to gain more health back than this costs. And that puts us pretty close to, but not quite at Red Skull range, which is also useful. The Face Trader says, Stop! Face, let me touch, or maybe trade. If I want to go down to Red Skull range, here's our opportunity. Lose 10 more health to gain 50 gold is kind of iffy. But having three strength at the start of the fight is not too bad. I'm also very happy to swap face here. And get uh, potentially a face that's good. If we got the Serpent Head, we could immediately gain quite a bit of money from that. Cleric face is good. The bad stuff would be relatively bad, though. And yes, 10, 10 health for 50 gold is a bad deal. The only reason we would even consider it is because of the additional strength from Red Skull going into the Elite. And because we can get a shop lead of this act. I do like that three strength. All right, let's do it. Let's go down to Red Skull range here. And let's immediately walk into a combat. Hmm. Cannot kill with this feed, can I? I can do 18, 27, 40. No, I cannot feed. And this would be a waste of the puzzle anyway. So I think we should just do Bash Strike and then maybe we can headbutt the feed. Definitely got to kill cultists first in this matchup. Hey, no problem. We can just do headbutt, shrug, feed. Yeah, that seems fine. on this turn, which could be a little scary, but overall not too bad. 
Gonna play Evolve, then Curse the Bell. Defend, defend, a Cinder's Bane. Here we go. I should have headbutt the power through. Uh-oh. Well, shoot. Let's see, do I have to do pot the blood for blood to get out of here? I think I do. We could maybe Gambler's Brew to try to get the Impervious in play. I think the Gambler's Brew is worth more than the dupe pot. Let me just double check. This would go to 33 times 0.75. Twenty-four. Forty-eight. Plus eight. So we don't actually kill with Bash Dupe Pot Blood for Blood. Is what I'm seeing here. Unless I've mismath somewhere. Yes, I did mismath because I forgot the three strength. Hold on. No, it's um the uh, twenty-five times one and a half times 0.75. 28 times 2 plus 8. That is enough. That is enough. Okay, that's not too bad. Let's just do that and get out of here. We're still in Red Skull range. After the fight, we get a potion back. The Cultist Potion, one strength per turn. Pretty good for fighting Champ with. I'll probably use it there. Could take a Hemokinesis plus, a Heavy Blade plus, or a Clothesline plus. I don't know that I need any of those. We don't need another Hemokinesis because of the blue candle. Werewolf 4K, thanks for the 20 months. Hello there. Clothesline could be nice for adding some weakness, although it's really expensive at two out of our three energy. I don't think so. These are too expensive currently. Same with, I think, the Heavy Blade plus the Cultist Potion interaction. Hmm, can I get away with upgrading feed here? I kind of feel like I can, as we don't have that many good upgrades. Again, bash is maybe an option. Anger is an option. Hemokinesis upgrade is an option. But we're getting extra upgrades via the Molten Egg, which means I can probably spend one on feed here. Do I like Clothesline less after seeing the Mastery Challenge stats? Yeah, I think it's still okay. The... Mod that displays potion chance is called Info Mod, and it's not on the Steam Workshop, instead being found on GitHub, with a link being there in chat. Could have also upgraded our power through, which I think would have been kind of helpful. Hmm. Okay, I know not to mess around in this fight. I'm going to use the feed on this turn to kill the sneaky gremlin. Exactly, Merle. Especially since, yeah, we can find upgraded uppercuts, too. I think that'd be a lot better. I don't think under any circumstances we get to let either of these gremlins live, so I'm pretty sure it's feed, strike, headbutt. Headbutting the uh, battle trance. Not going to play the Ascender's Bane and waste our puzzle here. But I will play Hemokinesis now, I think. Yeah, I will. Gotta get that discounted. Anger. The Evolve down. Or is it just Blood for Blood, Blood for Blood? No, it's Blood for Blood, Blood for Blood. To chunk through this enemy here. Jerk! Okay, good speed potion turn. We can block for a lot with that. Uh, I can play Hemokinesis and Blood for Blood for only one energy, so I, the way I see it here is kill this with Hemo, kill this with Blood for Blood. Oh, wait, is there lethal here? We can just kill, right? Bash, Hemo, Blood for Blood. Definitely looking at the wrong thing here. I got too excited about a speed potion being useful. When you see a good move, look for a better one. I see bash into kill. 
Let me just double check that's actually enough. This would be 1127 lots. Yeah, you're super dead. Right, 27 plus 37 is 64. Nintendo 64. Always look for checks on the enemy king. And always look for free heals at a rest site via the Eternal Feather. It's like a regal pillow, but you don't actually need to sleep. Excellent. Offered a free body slam. That's actually not bad. Red Skull Ruiner, it's true. I do kind of dig this body slam. Because we have Impervious, we have Power Through, and we have Shrug Plus. So we can block for quite a bit. We also have pretty good card draw. I'm going to take it. And then maybe upgrade our Power Through for plus five. Doesn't look like we need to heal here. I could consider going for the Burning Elite, although with just above Red Skull Health, it seems like the worst time to do it. I think we might want to go to this shop instead. Eat a bunch of combats. But yeah, let's get this plus 5 block upgrade. We could consider the Impervious upgrade too, that's plus 10, uh, which helps the Body Slam quite a bit. Although without the ability to retain block, I don't usually value this upgrade because this is often full blocking anyway. It's also not reusable like the power through is. How does this deck do against buffed Book of Stabbing? Not that bad. We can kill it pretty quickly. And if it stabs us, we just draw cards and get cheaper cards and gain strength. Yeah, as Merle says, the impervious upgrade doesn't do all that well until Act 4. Also, more max health. Now we have 113. Take that over the blue key happily. More max health, more better. Okay, we're we're in pretty good shape, actually, for Burning Elite. I still do like that shop, though. We can remove a strike, maybe add a relic. Got too many strikes in this deck. Hmm. This could also be Super Slavers, which would be um, spicy. Against Act 3 Elites, actually we do pretty okay against Reptomancer. Blood for Blood is perfect for killing daggers. We've evolved for Nemesis. Giant Head could maybe be an issue. Yeah, I think we'll go uh, Green Path here. And face these nerds. Oh my, face is hurting. Ow, my everything. Ow. So this is not desirable. Huh. Really, really terrible turn one draw here. This is a very act one hand. So it goes sometimes. We could consider Gambler's Brew here. Honestly, because of Red Skull, I think I'm just going to take the damage. Got a free potion slot. We got more important stuff coming up. I mean, I'd rather use Brew on turn one of Slavers than this turn one. For example, if we if we get the same hand. Do I hit by the anger is the only question. I think the answer is no. Yeah, entirely vindicating get some strikes out of the deck. Definitely. Definitely. Okay, you're in feed range. That's really all that matters. I guess it doesn't matter where I play this, so I might as well play it here. Ow. Oh. Thanks for the free blood for bloods, I guess. Two energy block. 14. Impervious is better. Perfect. Kill the nerd. Perish. 
Let me gain 10 hit points. Pretty good, actually. Now we're up to four potions going into the elite. We're offered a second anger, a drop kick, or an armament. They're all okay. Like Arma a lot more without the molten egg. How do we have so much max health? We've gotten pretty lucky. We found a feed early. Uh, we found the mango and the pear, and we ran into the cursed altar event that gave us five more max health. So we've been dining well on this run. Skip these. All right, it's a book of stabbing, not super powered, just normal powered. Do I need to potion here? Be down to use the speed potion in this fight. I don't feel like I need to use the others. Power potion, I think I want to keep for act four. Same with the gambler's brew. Cultist potion, I'd like to use against the champ. We have very low chance of finding a, another potion in this act, so... Yeah, I think just the speed potion is what I'm going to plan on using here. I'll be back for you, Feed. I swear it. Definitely want to play Evolve here. Is that this a speed potion? Nah, we want to take one more hit anyway. Speed pot for four seems like a terrible use of it. This is a mediocre turn as well. I guess just impervious. Strike? Hmm. What about seven by five next turn? Concerning. Yeah, this might be our speed potion turn. And I think I'd like to look at a new card versus headbutting one thing that's in my hand already. Currently, we can play exactly all of these cards. Block 16. 26 would be a lot better. There's no other things that we can headbutt beyond what's in our hand. So we could headbutt blood for blood, but... I guess there's a chance I miss feed, but I could also maybe draw into the power throw. see what this gets. Just a strike. Okay. Nothing too fancy. That's fine. Um, I guess I don't want to sh headbutt any of these cards, so I should play the strike. Miss out on a little bit of damage. Is that true? No, we should probably headbutt the blood for blood. Help me get a kill next turn. Ow. Yeah, because if we draw this, we better just kill, right? I can try to get a feed, but I think we better just leave. Seems like a bad idea to stick around here. Get 33 gold in the courier, discounting the shop. That's going to make this shop extra valuable. As well as a pommel strike plus, deal 10, draw 2. Now that's what I'm talking about. Card draw. Card draw, card draw. Hiya! What you got, Snack? Perfect. Don't think the damage actually discounts the blood for bloods. Oh dear. But my face, though? Hmm. 
Oh dear. My face indeed. We probably have to use the Gambler's Brew next turn. It probably means I better use it just right now. Twenty-seven plus another fight next floor. I mean, we we could actually be dying here if this goes sufficiently badly. Not what I was expecting. Don't want to mess with this. It's a bit better. Okay, one cost blood for blood is good. We might as well play this. Okay, thanks for not killing me, I guess. Next turn could be bad, though. Ugh. That's pretty bad. Uh, so this is, th I think this is actually really showing us why that snack OI was so bad at the boss reward. This deck does not function with random cost cards. Spooky. Very spooky. I guess we just play this. But then this draw next turn is pretty tough. Definitely worried we could just die. There's 27. Okay, all zero cost. Excellent, excellent. Excellent. Okay, just headbutt feed. Shrug into it. Play it. Never had a problem in my life. We got a Liquid Memories, which could save our bacon. And do we want a Searing Blow plus one? I don't think so. But 25 health is definitely spooky. We're super going to rest before the boss, probably. Um, we just have to get through one more fight. And with 25 health, I'm pretty sure we can do that. Hey, good thing they attacked me on turn one. Take it. It's not usually something I would celebrate here, but... Uh, Today's the day, but I'm grateful they attacked. I'm going to eat you now. Very clean fight overall. Excellent. Plus nine in that fight. Rage. Rage is kind of cool. Unupgraded, it's a little bit weak. I think we have to rest before champ unless we get a... Waffle in the shop or something. I'll skip this. Alright, shop. We went this way on purpose because uh, we figured we would need help. What do you have for us today? You've got orange pellets, you've got feel no pain, you've got bloodletting. Seems like a good shop. There's also wing boots here, allowing us to teleport around. Amul hits five times. Had I more strength? I guess it's good for the boss fight. Grumlin Horn is tempting for Act 3, making Reptomancer a lot less dangerous. But I think I'd rather have Feel No Pain Pellets Bloodletting here. How good is Sadistic Nature? I consider it very weak on Ironclad. Can I afford Strike with all that? 200, yes, we can do Feel No Pain, Orange Pellets, Bloodletting, Remove, all of it. Let's find out what's behind Feel No Pain first. Aha, I was wondering. Okay. I'll be taking that. Give me that. There's Rupture, too. What's behind door number three? 
What's my stance on Perfected Strike? It's very good in Act 1 and Act 2. And you can you can make it work for the whole game if you do, like, Sneko Eye and a whole bunch of copies. Bloodletting or Remove. Yeah, that's a tough call, actually. You could opt out of the orange pellets. That doesn't seem like a wise choice. This will help right in the champ fight. Let's take this. So yeah, bloodletting or remove. Bloodletting looks really good, I'm not gonna lie. And with the Dark Embrace, we don't need to remove the strikes, we just need to add a True Grit. Or a Burning Pact. So I say bloodletting. Over remove here. No disarm for us. We could also buy Seeing Red, but I think we're good. With just the bloodletting. Very good shop overall. Yeah, I feel like we got most of the way towards where we need to be for the late game. We could maybe beat Champ with 49 hit points, but I'm not sure. I'm just going to rest here. I know if I rest, we can do it without using our potions, other than the uh, cultist potion. So let's do that. Ah, indeed. I'll play this too. We gotta get the blood for blood down to zero. I'm not gonna play anger yet. Reasonable turn for our impervious. So we draw power first. Yes. Attack. Power skill. Removed this debuff. I'm trying to keep the debuffs off of the champ fight is a, it's a losing battle, really. And yeah, we are taking some hits occasionally, that's why we need to be 100 hit points for this fight. So I feel like we did. Champ's buffing with a first metallicize only now. That's a good sign, actually. Looks like we're being aggressive enough that we should be able to prevail pretty quickly here. Hmm. If I bring Champ... No, I can't bring Champ below half this turn. Never mind. Ooh, you've activated my red skill. Turn after champ drops below half is when he begins to enrage. We're about to be hit with weak two, Vuln two. I don't think we want to hit him again just yet. Pass here. Gain more strength off of our cultist potion. Although that might mean taking a bit of a beating here. Draw the impervious. Good. Keep waiting. Okay, now we should go. Now we should deal as much damage as possible as quickly as possible. Give me back pummel strike, I guess. I guess. Deed is likely not getting played here. Although we could maybe Liquid Memories in. Probably wouldn't be worth it. Get him. Yeah, 
just barely. Although it looks like we are allowed to reshuffle with the Battle Trance and try to draw into feed here. So we might as well. Did not get there. GG, Mr. Champ. That was a closer fight than I thought it would be, based on entering with 100 hit points. Uh, the deck is definitely a little bit weak still, and in order to get it to be strong, we're going to need to pick up cards that can exhaust other cards, which we don't actually have yet. Although, here's one. Um, corruption, Feel No Pain, Dark Embrace, anybody? Anybody? Anybody at all? Also, Orange Pellets. Like, we have four different reasons to click on Corruption here. Um, we could also take Fiend Fire Plus, which is good for similar reasons, but uh, it's no Corruption. Yoink. And? Ooh, cube versus coffee dripper. What a choice. This is a runic cube deck, for sure. This is a deck that can take runic cube and be very happy about it. But the coffee dripper is a little tempting too, giving us more energy for effectively no downside. Why are pellets and corruption good? Uh, pellets requires powers to activate. Basically, the more powers you have, the easier it is to use them. Corruption's a power. It's as simple as that. We do have a pillow, but we also have a eternal feather, which makes resting less attractive. Although with this many hit points, resting might be more attractive. We take the runic cube, the idea is that we rely on our self-harm draw and our energy cheats, the corruption and the bloodletting, to get everything done for us. Cube is more impressive. Cube is, I think, the cooler run from here. You know what? Let's do it. Enigma Engine, thanks for 32 months of support. We're going maximum card draw here with lots of hit points. Will it work? We are still missing a 25 hit points at the start of the act, by the way. Will this work out for us is the question. And the answer is I hope so. Certainly hope so. We are going to want a couple... Oh my good. Okay, we're, we're going to want a couple of key upgrades before we actually try to pull this off. And I see a route that gets several elites and several upgrades. I'm thinking upgrade um, bloodletting and upgrade corruption are very important here. We'll take some combats along the way, I suppose. Although I do want one event. Let's take this path. Dead Branch when? Indeed. That is the important question. Not quite, huh? Although... No, that's not helpful either. Draw me some cards, please. Shouldn't need to do any more self-harm than the one bloodletting that we played. Excuse you. Guess I'll play this. So this is not a full block. Should put the strike first too. What a predicament. Oh no, it is a full block. I can't math. We're fine, we're fine. Silly me. There's the shockwave. With corruption, we super take a shockwave. Although Warcry has some merit too. Super take a shockwave. And we get some excellent options here. We have Courier as a reminder. What a great one, sh uh, one event to go into. So we could take 999 gold for two normality curses. 
Although the deck that we have plus normalities is kind of spooky. We could also fight a boss for a rare relic, which is very good. But yes, we have the blue candle to allow us to survive having the normality in the short term. At least, sort of. Problem is, we have lots of draw effects, so we'll draw into the normalities, and that'll be awkward. So I don't love the 999 gold. This is also for max health, right? Hmm. And yes, normality will stop you from using the blue candle if you've already played three cards. Which is the other compounding concerning factor here. Um, do we get another shop later this act? No, that'd be having one normality into the act bosses. I don't think that's acceptable. We'll fight a rare. Or fight a boss for a rare relic. It is Hexaghost with 106 hit points, so this could go a different kind of badly. Nine by six, that's okay. We got Impervious Shrug It Off, which is not a full block. This is 63 damage. I've only got 42 block. Or I can't play the Shockwave, right? Hmm. Let's see what Shrug draws. Feel no pain, does not help. Okay, just shrug impervious, take um, actually quite a lot of damage. Ow. No, that's fine, that's fine. It's all fine. is tricky. Definitely. Uh, we're not even killing Hexaghost in the right time frame here? Too busy trying to get set up. Failed to get Evolve in play. I'm going to eat you now. No, I'm not. I'm going to leave. GG, I suppose. And look at that. We get a third of the gold we wanted. 300 instead of 999. But we also get a blood potion. And our choice of dual wield or iron wave. Dual wield's cute, but I don't think we can actually use it. I'm kind of rich. Maybe I should have taken that uh, seeing red. Let's do this. Hit me. Losing health is going to be a, a facet of life sometimes that we can't always avoid. Orange Mango, thanks for the Prime sub and 37 months of support. Yeah, we gotta get our powers upgraded so they're a bit cheaper. Otherwise, this is really tough to sustain. 
We kill this turn. I think we can get maybe two of them. If I waste the feed, I think we might be able to get two of them. I'm not willing to waste feed, actually. We can rest if we need to. We've got lots of healing coming our way. So I'm going to play the Corruption. Skull range has its benefits, anyway. with feed? Is that true? What if I hemokinesis anger feed? No, that won't get a kill. Just have to lower their health still. Okay. Could be bad. Mm, not too bad. Draw feed now. Dang it! There we go. Nice. Okay, armament's looking a little bit better with the Feel No Pain, Dark Embrace, Corruption thing. Let's grab an armament. Fight this nerd. Guy's pretty easy thanks to orange pellets by playing a power attack and skill in the same turn, which does not always happen. Then we can remove the stinky. I guess we could do feel no pain, defend, feed here, which is not a bad idea. This is a spooky turn otherwise. I don't have a good answer beyond that. I guess I could use liquid memories as the other option. Yeah, let's go feel no pain, defend feed. Let's to lose feed, but we block for quite a bit. Don't take that much damage. Ugh. Garbage. Dark Embrace, so I could hit about Dark Embrace, then I can't play Power Through. Blue Candle, the best relic in the game? Maybe for this run it is. We just trance and see what we draw? That's not too bad. Although one might want to... Let's Power Through first. Could have even hit about the Power Through, I suppose. That would have been an okay idea. better idea than what I did. Let's see, feed is already gone, yes? We just need to leave. It's kind of a miserable fight. We do get even more max health, though, in the form of a fruit juice. It's not too bad. And our shop says, here's a Duvu doll. Start combat with two strength. There's also Ori for a bunch of card awards. Uh, Strike Remove is finally here. True Grid is here. Two sixty-seven is a lot of gold to pay for two strength, but it is two strength.
Hmm. I'm gonna buy the True Grant. Let's start with that. It's a rage behind it. Can't get both of these. What upgraded attacks would we want in the orrery? Uppercut's okay. Mostly though, I'd be looking for energy generating skills. Another bloodletting, a seeing red. More copies of Feel No Pain or Dark Embrace. Stuff like that. Or just more skills to exhaust. Not really attacks. Offering, yes, offering would be exceptional. I'm not convinced that I do want two strength. Let's look at the Ori. Reaper. How about Reaper plus Twishat? How about that one? Pummel plus. Heavy Blade plus. Power Through plus. Armaments plus. Okay, we're definitely taking Reaper and Power Through plus. Those are pretty good. No energy generators, alas, but lots of upgraded cards, at least. You want a second armaments? Yeah, probably we do, especially an upgraded one. That can upgrade other cards. Sundial can be energy. I think I'm just going to save money for the final shop. I think that's what I'm going to do. Flex with pellets is okay. Not a flex plus though, right? Give me back my card reward. Oh, I get it. There it is. Yeah, we don't even have flex anymore. It's the but uh yeah, there's no flex. Alright, I'm out of here. And I'm gonna have a sleep. Actually, no, we're at right below Red Skull range. There's only one elite. I think we can do. A 60 health elite. I also have a blood potion and a fruit juice if I'm really panicked here. So let's upgrade what? Bloodletting or Dark Embrace or Corruption? Bloodletting first. Because we can use that multiple times for more energy. Like so. Pretty good turn one. I do say so myself. And yes, hit me for one damage, Mr. Dagger. Back my bloodletting. This would be a great time for Reaper. Excellent work. Two of these daggers are killing me or whatever. This does eight per dagger though. Oh, this is a huge heal. Okay, let's just bash one of the daggers then. Try to kill them. Juicy. Perfect. to attack. Now I've got a plan.
Let's see if I can block and then headbutt. A kill? Is that gonna work? I'm not sure about that. No, let's headbutt more damage for the moment. Shoot. Okay, maybe too many statuses? I hope not. Tazin 786, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome uh, to the Cozy Sub Club. Doesn't look like we get to feed, unfortunately. No, not with this hand. I'm okay with that. I'll just take my 100 plus hit points. Do I want that? <laughs> so, Tungsten Rod would prevent the curses from damaging me if I played them. But it does reduce the damage of Bloodletting down to two. Um, Hemo is still one, and Beat of Death is still one. This is not bad, actually. I would not call this the worst rod ever. If we had... Um, Self-forming clay. This would be the worst rod ever. And we still have Dark Embrace to draw off the curses. I actually think it is fine. Although not completely desirable. Uh, you need to be one cost. Actually, so do you. You both need to be one cost. And I can do both of them here, so it's fine. Gotta skip the bronze scales. We took pear instead. I'm, I'm okay with that. And I'll recall here, just so we have a little bit more option at the final fire, just in case we find a Dark Embrace Plus or something. But the bloodletting will. Plus headbutt feed. Draw a bunch of cards. Should have played Dark Embrace first. It's fine. played without really doing anything. Like I said, I'm, I'm pretty cool with that. Close enough. 142 max health now. Here's a burning pact for more card exhausting. But I pick up some sort of strength gain like a spot weakness. No, the goal for scaling our damage now is to draw more cards so that we can either play the Blood for Bloods more frequently or we can play the Body Slam for big damage. Transform a strike into cleave. That's better than a strike. Probably. Uh, oh. Be back for those hit points. Thank you. Ooh, even worse, actually. Perfect block. 
which means I didn't draw a card, actually. The opposite of perfect luck. Ow. Straw order is very painful. Oh, he's just ranked the blood potion. I'm not willing to sacrifice important stuff just yet. Oof. Getting absolutely spanked by this foe. So once we're set up, we can do lots of damage. But getting set up can be a painful experience, as you can see. Ugh. Should have had better than another card. How can our draw be so bad? Just garbage. True garbage. Gorgon Socks, you're heckin' welcome for all the YouTube content. Happy to be a voice to relax to. Through tough times. Too many strikes? We've only got two. We've only got two. Definitely want to evolve immediately in this fight. I'm wondering if I do power through Burning Pact or anything. I'm going to. Draw a little bit deeper into the deck there. Goes for 45 right away. Why wouldn't he? It. Why wouldn't they? Here we go. Here we go. Well, that could have been better still. Oh well. Bummer. Freaking ouch, man. Uh, I'll play the other attack first. chance to hurt it. the feed. That's pretty good. I think we have enough health going into the boss gauntlet here. Get an ornamental fan, giving a little bit of block for three attacks played. A second impervious is very good with the corruption and the body slam. Useless gas with the eight months, eight months and still slaying. Belford, thanks for the 15 months. That's right. Losing on the heart resets the streak. It's got to be a heart win to count. We have 107 health. I don't think we need to rest here. I think we can upgrade our Dark Embrace to be one cost. That's, we are struggling to get it in play on three base energy here. Definitely relying on our energy cheats. That is Corruption and Bloodletting to allow us to play cards. And we're relying on our massive card draw to allow us to actually do stuff, I guess. And I think that means that sometimes we just have to take damage and play all of our powers on the turn we draw them. And then have a bad turn one, but a really good every other turn. With this many hit points, we can afford to tank a few hits. Especially during the hard fight. Let's 
draw any more cards. Actually, maybe I play Blood for Blood, let you hit me one more time. I could play Hemokinesis Blood for Blood. Just play the Blood for Blood. Isn't 36 cards a little thick as far as uh, decks go? Normally, yes. However, when you draw this many cards, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Upgrade everything. Perfect. Destroy that. Dick. So even with Corruption on bottom, we get it on turn four. Not ideal, but pretty good. Easy peasy. Draw all the status cards. Deck is only helping us out here because of our powers. I like it that way. want to kill Deka soon, or Donu soon here, though. This looks like a pretty good turn. Power through for later, but I'll play the body slam now. We should be able to kill Donu with a feed next turn. Gabe Arise, thanks for the 21 months in the Prime sub. You keep watching, I'll keep keeping on. Sound good? Um, we should head uh, to Blood for Blood, I believe. Excellent. We don't need bash anymore, really. Please head about the block card. Thank you. Probably actually don't want to play Anger this many times in the other fights. We might even want to remove Anger over removing a strike, as it seems like playing it actually does backfire. So without gaining strength, we just can't have this many Angers. They don't do enough damage. It's unacceptable. Need to be drawing the blood for bloods over and over again. Okay, so for example, we definitely don't want to play Anger at all against Time Eater here. Because that would be a bad idea. Cryptic Zen, thanks for the six months. Here's to some Spire and a dad joke. Give you an oldie but a goodie since your name reminds me of this one. A Buddhist monk walks up to a hot dog vendor and says, Make me one with everything. Hot dog vendor makes the hot dog, gives the monk. And the monk asks, Where's my change? The vendor replies, Change must come from within. That is all, Twitch chat. 
All right, hit me. You fool, the more damage you deal to me, the more cards I'm going to draw. Let's go. Power through, evolve, shrug. And then this absorbs the last damage. I need to play bloodletting here. Where does Time Eater work at? Where does Time Eater work? Savannah Vaz with 53 months of sub ports. I got a corruption here, huh? Unless I want to try to draw back into corruption, which I don't think that I want to do. Tempting. Keep that bloodletting for later. Turn. Kill quickly here. Oh, shit. Uh, no, I just don't play Reaper, right? We do Slime Slime Body Slam or Strike Pummel Strike Body Slam. No, this is fine. For a second there, I thought I couldn't play 12 cards on that turn, and that would have been really bad. But we could, we could. You do 22, you do 16, that's a kill. Om nom nom. Time Eater devoured. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread could be felt throughout the room is this, the heart of the spire, the source of all of these hit points. You ready your blade, dealing 21. 40 damage as we head into the final fights here. And I'm feeling pretty good overall. We're missing a ton of health. 129 out of 154. After the fire, that's actually only missing 4 health. Okay, so we definitely get to upgrade here with the upgrades that are appealing, including the True Grit, the Feel No Pain, the Evolve is pretty good because all of the upcoming fights add statuses. Or the Shockwave for more turns of Vuln and Weak. I think the Evolve is probably the best one. Do I ever forget to take a heart key? It has happened. Although it's very rare. I've only done it, I think, once for each key. Second Armament's not terrible as far as upgrades go. Although I'd rather just directly upgrade the card that the Arma is trying to upgrade. Again, probably the Evolve here. Let's upgrade the Evolve. Let's see what the shop has. Bottled Lightning is a thing. Master of Strategy is a thing. Another Power Potion is really good. I'm probably going to buy another Power Potion here over the uh, Strength Potion. Elixir, exhausting any number of cards in hand. Also really strong, actually. 
Piece of pie, SK, thanks for the 12 months of support. This is like a super gambler's brew. It's hard about rolling for barricade, not necessarily. Do quite a few things to beat hard here. <laughs> Removing anger might be a good idea. Let's discard this potion and buy the power potion first. Okay, colorless potion. Separate Soul's not that bad. Having a way to get rid of our reusable status card generation is not a bad idea. This is not bad. It would get rid of wounds, turning them into block, which is kind of important. Although two energy is definitely costly. The idea is that we can redraw the blood for bloods with it. Poor man's second win, exactly. Since we don't have a second win, it can work okay. Zeknar with a 363 folk raid. Welcome, welcome, everybody. You're just joining us for Act 4 of an Ironclad run as I stare down the shop here. We're thinking about buying Severusol because I have no other way to get rid of status cards and we accumulate quite a few of them. What about Blind for some more week? Not the worst idea, quite frankly. Let's remove that anger. And I'm gonna drink the blood potion, take the elixir here. There's also a gambler's brew, but I think we're good on potions now. So yeah, I could buy blind and sever soul. Let's do it. Oh, or and dark shackles. I'm gonna do that instead. Sorry, sever soul. Dark shackles says uh, it's a better card. Elixir is our second win then. I think it's a bad idea to play this power through. I need to take damage, so I draw more cards. So let's go Pummel Strike, Corruption. Body Slam does nothing. Defend means I only take one hit rather than two. Blocks for seven? No, blocks we take 10 normally. If we play the defend, we take four. Block six. I think I'd rather draw the extra card. Take six damage, draw one more card next turn. Next turn is very important that we get good draws, so drawing as many cards as possible. And we get a full ten card draw if this spear just stabs us in the face a bunch. This is where the Runic Cube really pulls its weight versus the additional energy we could have had. Davy Cricket, thanks for the Prime sub and the two months of support. An excellent draw. Exactly what we wanted to see overall. Draw one more. Reaper is not getting a lot done, unfortunately, but we can block so very much. Hilariously, it's still not a full block. I guess we want to blind you. Okay. There's Dark Embrace. Give me more stuff. I wonder if we want to kill the Spire Shield first now. Let's try it. So no draw gets removed. That lets me headbutt... Body Slam. Armaments, upgrades Impervious, upgraded Impervious. 
Um, Dark Shackles here for vulnerable. Play Shockwave. This does 91, so I can kill with feed. Get rid of this. Seems good. And get some back some of our health with a Reaper, and I fully intend to here. Okay, question is, can I stop this? The answer is m maybe. Looks like yes, actually. Super dead. 18 block on turn three will help quite a bit. Having all four of these potions, I think, means the victory is basically in the bag here. And I really like a seeing red to help out with our energy generation. So I think we're in great shape here. Two free powers on turn one means we can do some hot nonsense. <clears throat> Maybe that'll be a demon form or another dark embrace or a... Barricade, I think, are some of our best options. We could maybe wait until we find armaments before we play the power potions. Oh yeah, we also have orange pellets, so we might want to save one for turn two. To remove the debuffs. I think in any case, I'd probably start with a pommel strike here and draw a ton of cards. Pommel Strike draws six, I believe. Yeah, one energy draws six. Go to a full hand here. Shockingly, not much of use, though. Almost an elixir turn, but I'd rather have the powers in play first. Said we can get rid of cleave, strike, strike, defend, defend, hemokinesis. That's tempting. I guess we keep the defends, right? We would just delete four normal cards. I think the elixir's for getting rid of statuses, though. Let's True Grit. Make room in hand here. Got rid of a defend. That's fine. What are you? Okay, we do get offered Barricade. Berserk is not bad either, right? Hmm. That's actually one energy per turn. Really like having Barricade, though. Sick of Barricade. Then I'll play power through. Uh, it's unfortunately a attack that we're missing, not a power here. Although we can use the liquid memories on an attack if we need to, to get the orange pellets to activate here. Great turn to apply lots of weaken. Uh, I guess we should use this now. Second Dark Embrace. Excellent. Yeah, there's an attack we can use if we want to. Skip the Shockwave, play the feed. We really want the Shockwave down. Tempting to Liquid Memories, the Reaper, just to get rid of it. Let's do this. Hmm. 
sounds good to me. Means we don't remove the debuff for this turn. Or do we? Battle Trance into Bloodletting. Delete the burn. Do more damage. Shrug. Keep corruption away for now. Now we're talking. more or less. Get uh, one of these. There go. Good turn. Looks like we're in a very solid position here. We have 300 effective health. Heart is, we almost have more than the heart at this point. We're about to have more than the heart. Body slam next turn for the kill. Yeah, Sneko was scarier than Heart this run. Certainly. Certainly. GG Twitch chat. Let's see if we can land a feed here, hey? Block 90, no problem. Delicious. GG, we end with the run at full HP. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next, and don't forget to follow on Twitch to watch the content live. Click the link in the description below.